Yes, I want to welcome all of you back to my channel today. And I have a lot of new subscribers here, and I just want you to know how much I welcome you, and I hope that you enjoy the camaraderie and the friendship and all the relationships that we have going on here and um, the comments that we leave each other and the support that we give to one, one another. I just hope that you enjoy the time that you spend here with me watching my videos. I do try to do at least three videos a week and I try to upload on Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday, although that's not set in stone. Um, sometimes I may do four or five videos a week, but it is my commitment to at least get three videos up. So if you look forward to my videos and you're waiting for them, um, I will get them up eventually. <laughs> but um, like I said, I will try my best to stay on the schedule. But, you know, life happens and things come along and grandkids get sick and our families get to depending on us grandmas for um, help every now and then. And sometimes we can't um, stay on our own schedule but we will try to do our best. And I do try to bring you entertaining stories and funny stories. And of course, as life journey goes along, we experience hardships and, and tragedy and sad things in life happen. So this is uh, the month of February and I am remembering my deceased son, uh, my precious Jeremy Lynn Sullivan, who was killed by a drunk driver on um, May the 27th, 1997 in Kissimmee, Florida. Um, so, a good friend of mine here on YouTube, her name is Paula Hatton Vines, and she is a great artist and crafter, and she and I have been friends from uh, the very beginning of my channel. So, we've been um, sharing cards with one another and gifts with one another, and she is a very wonderful Christian lady. She and her husband, both um, her husband Larry, they live out in California. And um, I knew that Paula had made these keepsake bags, and I had asked her, would she please make one for me, for my son Jeremy's keepsakes. Um, I had kept his wallet and a few things that I had um, in a Ziploc bag, and I thought, well, they deserve a beautiful place to be stored in. So Paula kindly made this keepsake bag for me, and uh, let me show it to you here. It's just so beautiful all the lace and all the dangly lace here. Isn't it gorgeous? She has the pearls hanging down here. Now I will link the video that I made when I received this in the mail and opened it and the day that I put Jeremy's things in it and I have not opened it since. This is the back. She makes it just as lovely and beautiful as the front. Thank you so much for this, Paula. I do love it with all my heart. So let's open it and I'll show you some of the things that I have kept of Jeremy's all these years. Jeremy was a very special baby and very special young man. Um, he was brilliant and um, he was kind and loving. A shy boy, but kind and loving and uh, just as sweet and, and um, giving and caring as, as any child could ever be. <clears throat> and I am so proud to have been his mother. So um, you just open it up like this. And it has the pockets, two separated pockets here. So let's dig in there and see what all I store that, that belongs to my son Jeremy. There's a letter. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now, um, when Jeremy was about, um, I guess nine, eight or eight or nine years old, I got very sick with um. It actually was a misdiagnosed uh, thyroid problem. I believe I was diagnosed with hyperthyroid, and um, I went to Optioner's Medical Center in New Orleans, which is a renowned medical center, and they gave me this um nuclear pill or something to swallow. I don't know what it was supposed to do, but it just made everything worse. Af after I did that, I kept going back and they couldn't find anything wrong. So I ended up going to, over a two year period, uh, I ended up bedridden, I couldn't function, I couldn't take a shower, I couldn't take care of myself. 
So there was a period of time that I had to actually leave the children, and um, John had to take care of them while I was gone and in and out of hospitals, and I ended up staying in a hospital in California for 30 days. And the female doctor there discovered that I had absolutely no thyroid function. And she said, Glenda, I don't even know how you're alive. You know, your thyroid controls every function in your body. So this is a letter that Jeremy wrote to me during that time that I was away from him <clears throat> on January the 16th. I don't know the year, but it was probably about 1987. Dear Mom, I have been practicing new tricks on my skateboard. Jason and I have synchronized a trick. We ride backwards on our skateboards, and Jason counts to three. <laughs> then we both turn around. Saturday night, I spent the night over at Jason Murphy's house, and Jeremy Mintz spent the night over here, over at Jason's. We played on his racetrack. We also watched Revenge of the Nerds Part 2. Dad was thinking about taking a train ride down there around Mardi Gras. I hope I can see you soon. Love, Jeremy. Uh, this was a period of time that I was actually staying in New Orleans and being treated at Tulane Medical Center. P.S. Jason and I are going to synchronize a skateboarding routine for you when we see you. <laughs> He had a beautiful handwriting. Of course, he spells synchronized perfectly. I'm so glad I kept that little letter. What is this? Oh, it's uh, from Rock Hill High School when Jeremy lived with his father a couple of years after his father and I divorced. Uh, this is he uh, completed the driver's ed course. <laughs> Rock Hill High School, Rock Hill, South Carolina. This is to certify that the student listed below successfully completed the driver education course. Jeremy Sullivan, date of completion, May the 30th, 1994. And he got a grade A. Of course he did. <laughs> um, let's see what's in this side. Ooh, I think I feel his wallet. Yeah, let's take his wallet out of here. And this is the wallet that was um, in his pocket. He used it for many years, and um, it was in his pocket the night that he died in the car. Let's take out see what he's got in here. Uh, he's got his Social Security number on it. I think it's probably something from Valencia College. He was a freshman. He had just finished his freshman year of college. And uh, at Valencia. Oh, it's just um, a registration for his school. So look at it purple. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a, a Pizza Hut card where he was um, entitled to a 20% discount on his food. <laughs> Uh, he probably got that from his sister, Jill, because Jill worked at Pizza Hut uh, when she was in high school. Oh, and this looks like a ticket stub. I can't read. <laughs> read what it was to, some type of, um, you know, back then they used to have these concerts they were called raves. So it was probably a, a rave that he had gone to. He had just little notes in his wallet, like all teenage boys do. Oh, and this is his report card from Valencia Community College. Oh, it's so faded out. It's hard to read it. <laughs> oh, December 1996. Poor thing, only had a few more months to live after that. So sad. <laughs> Looks like somebody drew him a, a four-leaf clover, or maybe he drew it. It says, top of the morning. And then he had a, a camel <laughs> uh, match. 
Lizard Lounge, Dallas, Texas. I have no idea where he got that from. <laughs> he never went to Dallas, Texas that I knew of. Central Florida Blood Bank. Well, he donated blood on. And not, um, let's see, what is that? April the 22nd, 1996. So, um, a couple more things in there. Um, so let's see what else is in this keepsake bag. Uh, this is just one side. <laughs> this video is getting kind of long, so I'll just uh, empty out the one side and then we'll do the other side in another video. Oh, and this was one of his, um, a couple of his paste stubs. Yeah. <laughs> Just a couple of his paste stubs. He was a hard worker, bless his heart. You know, here's his Valencia ID. Spring of 1997. That was his last spring to live. And here are his, um, his pack of Newport cigarettes. He's still got his cigarettes in it. Oh, I miss this boy so much. So, um, I'm going to end this here, and I appreciate y'all coming along with me on this journey of remembering my precious son, Jeremy Lynn Sullivan. I know it's sad, but sadness is a part of life and we have to deal with it and we have to grieve and we have to pick up the pieces and carry on. And that's why I plan on, that's what I've done for the last 20 something years and that's what I will continue to do. And I just appreciate all of y'all being here with me. Thank you so much for your love and your sentiments and your sympathy and all of your good wishes. I love you with all my heart, and please give me a thumbs up, and if you are just passing through, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, and um, y'all just keep on coming back. Bye, guys.